Good dog. Good dog. Good dog. Pew. Good. Good. That a girl. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah. Good job, girl. And we're live. Welcome. What's going on, everybody? Uh, welcome back for another video. This video is going to be a little bit different than some of the hunts that we've been doing. Uh, we're trying out a little bit of a different format here, so I'd love to hear you guys' feedback on it in the comments, or if there's anything else you want to see like this in the future, just, just let us know. I wanted to go through how I clean a rough grouse um, and how we prepare it for the table to eat and then also storing it in the freezer for a later date. We're also going to show a really easy way to cook grouse and I think there's something to be said about that with wild game in general. I think a common misconception with wild game and grouse especially is that you have to prepare it in a way that it looks like it came out of a picture perfect catalog menu or something like that, but really you don't have to overcomplicate it or overthink it. It's just plug and play into your favorite recipes that you already enjoy. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. So this last weekend, I was fortunate enough to shoot a couple rough grouse, and we're gonna go through the process right now of how we clean the bird and prepare it to eat. And it's a really simple process. It's not a messy bird to clean. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. And we're just gonna go through how we do that from start to finish. So. The first thing I do is always remove the tail. And if you've got a bird that has a nice tail fan on it that you want to save or spread out and pin, um, all you do is just turn it off the back of the bird. So I'll usually start on the back of these pin feathers and there's a little base right here. You'll feel it down in there. It's a knobby bottom. So I'll just grab it there and I'll twist it. And it comes right off. And there's gonna be a few pin feathers that aren't attached to it anymore that will come out and you just pull those off to the side. And then from there, you have a nice full fan that you can pin out on a board and let it dry and display. So we'll set that off to the side. And then to do this, you only need a couple things. You just need a cutting board, a pair of scissors, a small knife, and a trash can. So after I remove the tail fan, we're gonna remove the head from the bird. So same thing as the tail fan. We're just gonna grab it at the neck and just twist. So now we have the wings, the feet, and the whole body of the bird. And what I'll do is I'll start by skinning the bird, which is gonna pull all the feathers off with the skin at the same time. So I'll start at the back of the neck, and you'll, you can see where the skin actually comes up above the meat, and you're gonna just pull up from there. And it's really easy to pull off. Um, if you do it with a little bit of patience, you can pull most of it all off in one go. And I'll start from the back and just work my way down onto the back of the thighs on the legs, um, the area where you would have pulled the fan from, go right down the back of the bird. And the wings we're leaving on for right now, so we kind of got to work back up in front of them you can grab the wing bone and continue to pull all that skin and feathers off the front of the bird as well um, and usually you can do it all in one in one take and we're just going to pull it off the back of the legs discard that and then you go back and just clean up kind of what's left All right, so we've got it all skinned and all the feathers removed, and we just have left the wings and the feet and the crop here. So this is actually everything that the bird was eating inside the crop before it digests it. So for the wings and the feet, I just have a pair of shears, and I just cut them right off. that on the feet and then the same for the wings. You'll kind of pull it up, get the meat exposed, and just one cut takes it off. And 
So now we've got the bird pretty much ready to go. We're just gonna pull the crop off here. Again, just like everything else we've done, you can just grab it at the base and pull it off. So now that we've got the bird completely and totally defeathered, skinned, um, we're gonna go ahead and open it up and pull the guts out. So we'll put it on the cutting board here, take our knife, cut a small slit in the back and we'll just pull it open and then I'll reach up in there. You can feel the esophagus and you'll just pull back directly on that and then just pull it all out into the trash and you'll pull the intestines out and it all usually comes out in one in one go. So from there, now you've got a rough grouse that's fully gutted, clean, skinned, and ready to be cut up and eaten. So we'll just wash it up a little bit, get the rest of these feathers off, and then from there we'll either store it or eat it. One thing I thought that was worth mentioning was the time frame of cleaning these birds. A lot of times I'll let the birds just sit for a couple days. Um, I'll get home from a hunt, it'll be late, uh, I've got dogs to put up, gear to get put away, and I just don't always get to cleaning the birds that night or in the same day that I shoot them. And as long as the bird isn't really bad, badly gut shot or it's not really warm outside. I mean, I'm even talking temperatures up into 40s degrees that I've let birds sit for a couple days without issues. Uh, you can actually go a few days if you're not able to clean the birds right away. Uh, you can let them hang or sit in a cool dark area for a little bit. Just like the birds in this video, it was a Saturday that I shot them on and it wasn't until a couple days later on Tuesday that I got around to cleaning them. Now that our grouse is cleaned, we're going to cut it up and get it ready to cook. So we're going to put the bird on its back and we're going to cut the breasts off. So there's a, a big breast bone that comes up in the middle of the bird and we're going to make a slice on each side of that bone and then just kind of pull away the breast. So you can see it right here and you can put your knife in and you'll just kind of feel it as you're going along. And right where you get to where the breast splits a little bit, you're going to feel that the wishbone kind of split off on each side and you'll just follow that around. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side, right up against the breastbone, all the way till it splits on the wishbone and cut it down. I'm going to turn it around and then go all the way to the end of the breast on each side. So on the inside you have the breast itself here and then the tenderloin and they are two separate pieces of meat and I usually just cut them all out at once at the same time and then pull the tenderloin off the main part of the breast. So we'll cut off the back And we'll just keep cutting all the way down the side of that breastbone there. And eventually the blade will come out the back side there. And then eventually you get up to where the wing bone connects into the breast. And we're just going to cut around that. Now we have the breast off a of rough grouse, and this is the tenderloin on the inside. And usually we'll just pull that apart, and then you'll separate the two. You have your loin and your breast. And we'll do that on the second side, same exact way.
again. That tender loin, and then that side breast. And then we're left with the thighs and the legs still on the bird. And what I do is I'll usually, this joint here, is I'll crack it and break it. And then cut along the inside rib cage on the meat. And then flip it over to the back side. And that line that we just cut on is right here. And we're going to cut from this side now. Now that the meat's cut, all that's hanging on is the joint. So we're going to just twist it and pull it off. And there's a nice thigh and leg from a grouse. And then we'll just throw the rest of the body away. So you have two thighs and legs, two tenderloins, and two breasts. Tonight we're going to make grouse club sandwiches. So we're going to fry a couple grouse breasts in a pan, put it on a bun with cheese, tomato, lettuce, a little bit of seasoning, and mayonnaise. So we're going to start out by tenderizing and pounding down our grouse breasts a little bit. We're just going to lightly tap it down. Just kind of flatten it and get it a little bit more in the shape in, of what you would put on a bun. This also makes the meat just a little bit more even for cooking, especially frying it in a pan because the breast kind of rises as it gets to the top of the breast. So if you just kind of flatten it a little bit, it gets it in a little bit nicer of a cutlet to fry in a pan. And we'll do the same with these tenderloins. We're going to go ahead and season these now. Um, you can use whatever your preferred seasoning is. We like to use this garlic jalapeno rub and we're just going to put a little bit on the outside. We're going to go ahead and fry these grouse breasts now. We've got a really hot cast iron skillet going here. We're going to add a little bit of butter into it, get it melted down, and we'll go ahead and add our grouse breast soon. Now a big thing with grouse is you don't want to overcook it. So we're just going to cook this really hot just for a really short, brief amount of time. And I do have uh, a press here that I'm going to just sear it with and press down on it. You don't need to do this, but it just flattens the meat and cooks it a little bit more even still.
So this grouse has been cooking for probably about four or five minutes now. We don't let it cook too long just because we don't want to dry it out. And we'll just take it out of the pan. And put it on our bone. So we're going to put just a piece of lettuce on top now. Add a couple slices of tomato. And we put a little bit of everything bagel seasoning on ours. Again, any or all of this is optional. Put a little mayonnaise on the bun. And there's your grouse club sandwiches. So we cleaned a couple grouse, we prepared and cooked one, and we have one left for a later date, and we're gonna go ahead and get that vacuum packed and sealed up. So out of the two birds that we cleaned tonight, we ate one of them, and we have a second one left over that we're gonna store for a later date. And we freeze them, and we vacuum seal them, so I've got a vacuum pack bag here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put that bird whole into the bag. And we're also going to include the legs from the other bird that we cut off and just cook the breast tonight. And I like leaving the birds whole personally because I think it gives it a lot more versatility for cooking it. A lot of times we might put the bird whole into a slow cooker or something like that. And I just like cooking the bird whole at that point. I think it adds a little bit more flavor to the meal instead of just cooking a breast or a leg or something like that. So. We always freeze it and store it whole, so we've got it in the bag and we're going to go ahead and vacuum pack it and get all the air out of it so it will last a long time in a freezer. So that's it. All the air is sucked out and we'll go ahead and throw this in the freezer and it will last a long time like that. So that's going to go ahead and wrap up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for following along and watching if you've made it this far. Um, if you guys could, please subscribe to the channel and drop a comment if you're looking for any other type of Upland content to be out there. Um, we're looking for new things to do and different things to do and really interested on the feedback and things you guys want to see. So uh, I'd love to hear it and appreciate you guys following along. And as far as cooking grouse goes or just wild game in general, have fun with it and just put your own twist on it and add it into recipes that you already enjoy. I'm going to get back out there this weekend. We've got a little bit of time left here in the season to try and get the dogs out there and find some more birds. So good luck to you if you're out there still and have fun.